I saw your audition for Eleven um, a few months ago. I did, yeah. Don't you think I should have been cast? Yeah. I know, right? What were they thinking? Before you were hired as Hellboy, uh, did you audition for all the movie roles? Yeah, before I was hired for Hellboy, it's interesting because they sent me the script, they really wanted me to play the Blood Queen. They really wanted me to play because they thought I was far prettier than Mila and that it would be a really great thing. But unfortunately, when I read for it, they were just like, well, he's got to be Hellboy. So yeah, I, 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 I'm as disappointed as you are. But you gotta go see the movie with just me as Hellboy again. How would you play the character of Mila Hobovich if you... I, you know, I don't want to do it right now. <laughs> okay. Because you'd probably get so excited. Okay. And you just really want to change the whole movie. And I don't want to do that to you or to audiences, so uh, yeah. Uh, in other projects, you are the father who has the Star Wars Rebel son. But in Hellboy, you are the Rebel one. So. How was the switch for you? Did you ask for Millie Bibi Brown for <laughs> advice or something? Did I ask for her advice on how to be a rebel? Yeah. Uh, no, I've, I've been, I've been uh, being a rebel on a smaller scale for a lot of my life. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun to, to not have to rein yourself in to, and to be able to be, you know, the great thing about wearing a whole suit and a mask and everything is nobody really uh, can hold you responsible for a lot of things. You're just like this totally different creature. So I, you know, you could be angry and weird, and people would just like that's a, when you take it off. They're like, oh, David, like how are you? So it's great because you're just like lost in Hellboy, and you could sort of behave the way you want. It was it was very liberating. Are we going to see Jung Hopper with dad bod or in shape? Oh, such a dad bod in season three. The great thing about lifting weight is that when you stop lifting weight, your body just like expands in all sorts of ways. So uh, Jim Hopper has been doing a lot of eating uh, before season three of Stranger Things and you will see you will see a very well-fed Jim Hopper. Uh, you are part of big projects right now like Stranger Things and Hellboy. Uh, what is it like to become an icon of the pop culture? Wow, am I an icon of the pop culture thing? I love yeah, all right. I'm down. I, I mean, it's, you know, it's funny. Like when you're inside it, you don't really know it. Uh, and then, but uh, kind of other people know. It. It's like the same thing. Like I would have thought like Harrison Ford and, and like Star Wars or whatever, right? Like, and then I saw him. It was funny because I saw him on a, I saw him on an old talk show on David Letterman. And he was talking about, or no, not David Letterman. It was like, it was, you know, it was like, it wasn't Johnny Carson, but it was somebody, and he was talking about, they were like, oh, you have like action figures of Indiana Jones. Like, what's that like? And he said, I have no connection to it. It just exists in the world. And I remember feeling the same way about like Hopper and Hellboy. It's like the character, once it kind of leaves you, and once you play it, it becomes yours as much as it is mine. And it's just out there in the world. So in a way, I don't take as much I don't like, I don't consider myself this icon. I more consider like Hellboy an icon. Or I consider like Jim Hopper from Stranger Things an icon. But that's not really me. Like it's this thing that I've created, but it's almost like a painting. Like it exists outside of me. And uh, that's the only way to stay sane, I think, is to realize that like, you know, you're an artist, you're creating things, you're not, it's not you.